But I'm going to start yeah. off with someone who I'm convinced is some kind of CCP troll. Ah, but, well, Mr. Chinese man, tell me about the oppression the British are doing. <laughs> yeah, let's play this. So I think there's a crucial difference to be drawn here. Do you think that we are still suffering from the consequences of slavery in the Roman Empire versus... How's Xing Deng doing, mate? Yeah. Who is we? Who is we? Of slavery. Who is we? The global south. The, pe the, the people of <laughs> the ethnic, the, the ethnic serious? minorities yes. here. The people who are, who are descendants of the Windrush generation. They are still very much suffering from the, from the impacts of empire. Do you think that is really an appropriate analogy to compare them to, to people who were slaves under the Roman Empire thousands of years? In what way are you suffering? Do you, do you, <laughs> in what way are you suffering? You can, you can gasp and clasp your face. You're sat in one of the best universities in the world. In what way are you suffering? You are privileged. Correct. We, if we don't recognize our privilege, then we cannot help people who are not privileged. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get further on because... I'm... You are very mature. You're going to succeed in life. Pure secondary school stuff. Yeah. Someone, for, if you didn't catch it, someone starts out, point of privilege, your mum. There we are. Oh, yeah. You're at university. You're in <sighs> Cambridges, right? This is what I'm saying to Bay might as well be dead. But the, the CCP troll there in the back, and I'm calling him that because he's got that liar smile yeah. the whole time he tries yeah. to diminish but, you. The Windrush generation is hurting us. Or, you know, the whatever. global south. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Calvin's absolutely right there. No, you're privileged. You're all Shut privileged up. to be here. Shut up, privileged kids. And then the potatoes in the background. The, the thing, I, I, I almost kind of um, respect the grift of uh, someone like him who's standing up and trying to make you feel bad, yeah. whereas uh, the Chinese didn't do nothing, bro, and still yeah, doing Cal nothing. Calvin's from a single-parent household as well. Yeah. So to be like, you know, the, the, I mean, he's, he's a all, product of the Windrush generation, probably. All of the facts like, make this debate ridiculous. Yeah, it, like the, <laughs> all the white kids of the CCP agent berating Calvin for being for rejecting his oppression. But I, I think Calvin be like, we're in Cambridge University, you plebs, you're obviously privileged. I'm utterly embarrassed by what you can obviously see as like children of aristocrats in the British yeah. system sat there in the back going, oh, you like can tell this. by the distinct lack of chins. It's it's painful to see that. Because the thing is, as well, for Americans who might not realize, um, we still have a class system. It's still pretty hard and it is mm. horrible. Uh, the fact is that a lot of these people will become our future leaders. Most of these people will be those who make up what the Conservative Party and the Labour Party is. It's just a fact of the way this place works. Mm. And if you don't come from this background, you're insanely distrusted by those in power. Yes. It is shocking considering how terrible this is. But also by the British public. Uh, I, hate, yep. I hate to say it, the British public hate their own regional accents. They it's certainly do. really annoying. And uh, that's part of it. Anyway, but the, the we'll move on from, from that. And uh, we'll go to, well the other responses from the room uh, to Calvin's speech and one specific lady who, who is very upset for how the CCP troll has been treated. Yeah. Let's play. The proposition stood up, made a respectful, clearly articulated speech about the implications of slavery, the legacies of colonialism, and the opposition stood up and insulted one of our members. <laughs> Based. Again, smiles. Yeah. Look at that smile. Yeah. yeah. But the, the, no, okay, the CCP agent stood up, said a bunch of things that weren't true, asserted them, and then asked Calvin why he was guilty of oppressing himself. It's like, no. Calvin, you got to stop it, mate. Yeah, it, like, sorry, no. Shut up, CCP agent. So the next speaker for the... Um, <laughs> Is this the Global South? Is yeah. It? Proposition, just, it wasn't interesting, just kept saying that colonialism was the original sin yeah. of the British, yeah. and all whitey, I guess. Yeah. And therefore, again, it can't be solved. So Taiwan, not a part of the Global South. But here's the Global South. And I, I, I should probably make a compilation of them all referencing the Global South, because they yeah. fucking did it incessantly. And I don't know if you've ever heard this term before. Are you oh, the Global South, yeah, yeah. yeah so it just it, means the Browns. This is something I found that had been kicked up by the, uh, I'm going to say, it must be the American Law Department, again, with the critical race theorists. Yeah. I, I don't know where else this term has come from. It's made itself into the British law mm -hmm. uh, sections as well. Mm -hmm. Just from personal experience, I've seen that. And it is a fucking, it's quacko. It's like, not swearing, it's, but yeah. So, so I just can't get over how mad this is yeah. that people take this seriously. And actually intelligent people, like I'm not even being funny, like the people you meet are genuinely intelligent, but we'll still use the term global south, yeah. even after they've seen this map. And we'll get the map up. Look at this. All right, so what, what have we got here, Carl? What can, what can we narrow the global north, which is in blue, down to? Europeans. No. We can't even do that. 
Why not? That's the funny thing. So you've got. Oh, I got the Japanese, I suppose. You've got. If you zoom in on some of these things, you you find it even f- just madder because you can see like the global. If 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 you're like blurry vision, you'd think okay, basically Europeans, right? Like yeah. for some reason, Australia and New Zealand are there, right? Well, Europeans, they're European colonies. Yeah. But then, like you look closer, Israel's blue, <laughs> Japan is blue, South Korea is blue, not North Korea. Taiwan is blue, so nationalist China is blue. What's this bit in Indonesia there? Communist China isn't. Singapore is blue. Oh. Like you see the, the global north jumps down into the south all the way to just circle Singapore, not the rest of Malaysia, and then jumps back up at the way, getting out of there. Yeah. So it doesn't touch the disgusting borders of uh, Malaysia or I, the I love that the giant tyrannical state of China gets to be a part of the oppressed majority. Yeah, and also Hong Kong actually gets oh, included in the yeah. blue as well there. Yeah, yeah. It's just been taken over by the oppressors. Whereas uh, it's a, it, this isn't Amazing. about wealth. There are plenty of rich states in the red there. There are plenty of poor states in the blue. Yeah. Um, it's it's definitely somewhat about race. It's about the fact that it's they from, hate white people. Yeah. That's for sure. And uh, they hate Israel as well, which, um, again, uh, another day in leftism. But then they also hate Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan. And the reason for that fundamentally is because you could say they were... Uh, the successful, successful <laughs> colonies of the Anglo's. Yeah, that's that's the way to put it correctly. Which is uh, Taiwan, Japan, and Singapore. Uh, yeah, basically just under the American shield, uh, and and two of those were literal colonies of the Americans. No, so if years. the global North disappears, then the world economy disappears. No, we still have one. No, well, it's just very empty. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, like, or, or, like China. China's, Innovation disappears. China's sure. economy is is based on manufacturing trash for America and Europe. And theft. And theft. Uh, and yeah, so all innovation disappears. Like the, the global, like the financial markets disappear. Like the international trade routes will disappear. Um, high technology disappears. Like everything goes. Yeah, whereas the global self are made up of what exactly? Uh, it seems to be a collection of those who are in the brown race, according to Bell, and her 2D worldview. I mean, this is actually the two pixels we're seeing yeah. in real time. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, um, the whites and the browns. Congratulations, uh, Japanese. You're in the whites. Yeah. Uh, it, it, we, need to, we need to kick the Italians and Spanish out, though. I, I, yeah, Not yeah, having I, it. Not it, having it. The brown race just can't include anyone who's I think who's Italy is a part of the global south. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, this is a hill I'm going to die on. I'm sorry to dwell on this map, but just let's look at this map. Also, the Falklands is in the global south. Oh. How, how you got to do that to them? <laughs> like, I'd, I'd put Brazil in the global north. Not to mention that you've got, what is that, Canary Islands? Isn't that still part of Spain? Yeah. But they're in the global south for some reason? So Yeah, but Spain should be in the global south. <laughs> it's just like, well, why, um, if you're going to make the distinction, at least include the mainland. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Anyway. It's, it just, I'd definitely pure, put Eastern Europe in the global south. Like You have to be a pure actual madman. I mean, Russia is hardly part of the, the developed first world, is it? Yeah. And the, the reason so, I'm dwelling on it is to really get into it. Don't forget this map. Don't forget this phrase, because you will run across people in your life who will keep using this, especially if they come from our elite. And uh, this happens in America as well. And it is the maddest thing in the world. Just whilst they're making this argument, whatever debate or conversation you're having, look it up on your phone, load up that map, and just show them it and, and just make them justify the countries in it. Hmm. They won't be able to do it because they've never thought about this for more than three seconds. Anyway, moving on. We'll go to the um, retarded responses from from the audience, which uh, I think is, is rather long, but again, I really want you to get a feel of, of what we're dealing with. Yeah, Let's play. So the second speaker for opposition mentioned the very successful examples of Caribbean countries of, uh, what was it again? Uh, Barbados, right? And he compared it to the state of things in Benin. But what really confuses me is that Benin too was also colonized. And it was colonized by the French and it was treated much more brute and it was also it was treated much more brutally under colonialism. Obviously so I'm true. not sure what no, the, the, the reason why Benin is so poor today is precisely oh, because no. of neocolonialism by the French and by colonialism in the past. So I'm not sure what exactly you're getting at here. They have simply oh. failed to point out many many more examples of a, how of the living ramifications of colonialism today. If we look at like say Rwanda for example, right? As 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 short. Short, as recently as 1994, they were fighting a civil war in Rwanda. And the reason for Is that was because war? of the borders drawn by the British and the ethnic tensions that, that ensued. So if, if you really think that the, the legacies of empire are over and that our, our responsibility as Why'd a nation tootsies, towards man? the developing world has ceased, then those you borders, are right? sorely mistaken. Thank you very much. But no, I can't. We're not done. Oh, we are Cambridge students, so we probably don't need a history lesson. May I just tell <laughs> what I don't want to hear from the opposition side for the second speaker? Um, I wouldn't really want to glorify the British Empire. 
Um, I heard the second speaker of the opposition saying that before the pre-state, um, they established the hospitals, the railroads for the um, pre-stated colon colonial states, and um, that exactly is a racism, right? Like um, thinking <laughs> that uh, that's a racism. Um, the colony colonialized states were nothing English. before the colony actually happened. So. Please, 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 you know the please don't words? say that British Empire did a good job for the colonial. <laughs> um, Why is she for laughing? For the next argument, please. Thank you. Why is she laughing at her own statement? Uh, why is the audience applauding? Like um, the stupidest thing I've ever heard. What I love about the, uh, the, the British Empire drew the lines on the map argument, though, it creates ethnic tensions. Why? Well, you got two different ethnic groups living with each other, didn't you? Of course there's going to be tensions. Oh, Really? So what happened to uh, multiculturalism then? <laughs> so what you're saying is ethno-nationalism is the only answer to the Rwandan genocide. Yeah, also here's a pencil, redraw them. Yeah, good luck. Um, but Dude, that, that, Nobody who makes that argument is a serious person. They no, never thought about it. But it's also. But I just love the presuppositions. Like every ethnic group should be separate from every other ethnic group or else they'll kill each other. Yeah. But back good to point. that first CCP troll. Uh, Paul Benin, as you say. Yes. I, Won't I, someone I, think of... <laughs> Wakanda. Uh, <laughs> so I, I know that they're Cambridge students and don't need a history lecture, uh, but we're going to give you one anyway, because apparently you do, which is the Benin. Uh, what did they used to do, Carl? Well, they were a slave state. Yeah, they were the major slave state. Yeah. They were the ones who did all the slaving and yes. then sold all the slaves to Whitey. Turns yes. out the white man didn't turn up with a net. No, uh, no. He turned up with silver coins and guns to give to them in exchange for well, slaves. It was a bit dangerous going into the interior. It was a lot easier for the Benins. I don't know what the... Actual well, Kingdom of Dahomey at the time. Yeah, Dahomeans. To just give them the slaves and we'll give you guns. And the funny, amazing thing is, is that Dahomey was told to stop slavery by the British. Literally turned up or like, quit that. And they, the, the, the statement that's amazing is... King Gezo. What was his, what was his statement, Callum? It is the, the glory and the honour of my people to enslave people. It's the source of wealth. It is the thing that we sing our children to sleep with with lullabies about how we enslaved the slaves. Yeah, an enemy reduced to slavery. Yeah. Uh, the British never did any such thing. To to have your civilization to that level uh, in your interactions with slavery, oh boy, that is on a moral level of another kind. And as I think Voltaire well, the said, French came along, man. Like the the the, uh, the the British and the French and the Portuguese might be, you know, trafficking in people, but Dahomey is selling their children. No, to be fair, they're selling another <laughs> tribe's children. So I don't you know, know which is worth. Uh, but that's the first CCP troll argument, which is unbelievably ridiculous. And the funny part of all of that is that the Kingdom of Dahomey's empire was, was so based on the slave trade, they tried to change to a crop economy, yeah, failed, and then had to go back to slavery, hmm. and at which point they were destroyed. And the reason for that is that their economy became such a nothing burger because the Europeans, specifically the British, stopped the slave trade. There was nothing to make money off anymore. Yeah, what was it they were going to grow? Um, I can't remember what it was, but they... the. They had slaves doing the fields. And it still wasn't profitable? It still wasn't. Yeah, I can't remember who. I can't remember what it was they were growing. I heard not remember either. But it, it's some fruit or something. But the point being that because the Europeans, specifically the British, ended the slave trade, the kingdom of Dahomey became completely worthless, stricken by poverty, and then the French turned up and had to deal with that. Hmm. Uh, frankly, the French kind of doing a bit of charity, <laughs> even by French standards for colonies, because what you are finding is is not much. There you are, there's your history lesson. Rwanda, British did that. So, Hutus killed Tutsis. Well, wasn't it generations former... after we decolonized? We weren't even there. Yeah. Like, the Hutus killed the Tutsis in a former Belgian colony. Oh. <laughs> British did this. <laughs> uh, this is why I'm calling them CCP trolls, because uh, yeah. that bloke there and, and the lady both have the stupidest smiles on their face. And just remind me of CCP troll Twitter accounts. Oh, on the plus side, I think you could just say that they're the products of modern Western education. Maybe. I don't know. Man. I think they honestly they, just don't know. They they far more remind me of people who are in a Maoist struggle session in the books mm -hmm. we've read and are loving it and love yeah. putting down the other workers in the factory for being evil. Mm. The the only thing that's changed is the dynamic. They're putting down the British in their house yeah. instead of the workers back home. Yeah, that is fair. And also the last point being that I don't want to hear things. Well, who does? <laughs> the thing she doesn't want to hear is that Zimbabwe didn't have a space program. I, I, I suppose we won't mention it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.